Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Christian and in today's video we will be discussing this Renogy battery charger. This battery charger was sent to me from Renogy and I am extremely grateful for it because I genuinely think that this is a wonderful device. This device can charge up your batteries using either engine power or solar panels. So it's a nifty device that is able to switch in between these modes autonomously, so you don't have to think about it. We will be installing this device on my sailboat later on in the video and we'll be discussing how to go about doing that. But this device actually has a wider range of applications. You can use it on your RV, you can use it on your car when you go out camping, or you can use it on your sailboat. So it's a nifty little device that can be applied in many different circumstances and conditions. Also, this device has the ability to charge multiple types of batteries. So you can charge flooded batteries, car batteries, shell batteries. You can even charge the newer lithium iron phosphate batteries that are on the market. So I absolutely love the versatility of this device and I'm very excited to install it on the boat later on. A couple of words about it. It can take up a maximum of 40 amps, which is more than enough to power up and charge your batteries. It also comes with a built-in MPPT charge controller. So this MPPT charge controller is extremely efficient at converting solar energy into electrical energy to charge up your batteries. So overall, it's very efficient in converting that type of energy and making sure that your batteries stay charged. Before we go into any further detail about this device, let's just go ahead and open it, see what we get in the box and take it from there. This is the box itself. Very nice, very premium. You also have some key features outlined on the back of the device. You can pause the video and review them if you'd like. So let's just go ahead and see what's inside the box. We start off with a quick guide. It outlines pretty much everything that you need to operate the device. You have safety information, identification of parts diagram, installation instructions. You also have your wiring diagram, your charging control, your technical details for your engine input, as well as for your solar input technical specifications, and then warranty information. You also have your e-warranty card that you can use to register your product online. And then you also have your instructions on how to install the DC Renogy app, which allows you to monitor your devices. You have your Renogy stickers. You also have your heat shrink tubing that you can use to connect your device to your solar panels and to your engine. And then you also have your mounting screws. I actually really like the padding that this device comes surrounded in to protect it. Very well thought out. This is the device itself. Let's put this away for now. The device is very sturdy. It is extremely well made. This is actually one piece metal. It's very cold. The mounting brackets are also made out of metal. It's a huge bonus. The outside is made of plastic, which is a good decision because whenever something runs into it, plastic is able to absorb the impact a little bit better. So let's talk a little bit about the wiring. These wires are very thick. They're also pre-cut, which makes installation easy. You also have them pre-labeled, <laughs> which is a big advantage. You have your DC input, your output, you have your solar input. Overall, very well thought out. I'm actually very impressed. You also have this little panel right here that shows you the different types of batteries that you can charge 
as well as your MPPT charge, status, your solar priority, and whether the power is on or not. This button right here allows you to select between priorities, whether that is your engine power priority, also known as the DC to DC charging priority, or your solar priority, which is your solar panel energy. So let's flip it around. Know that there's a barcode right here. Let me just cover that. So over here, you can see the technical specifications about the device. And these holders are actually very sturdy. They're metal, which is very good. Overall, I think that this is an amazing device. It's extremely compact. It can fit very well in tight spaces, which is what it was designed for. It was designed to fit on boats and RVs where space is very limited. And you can see it's actually a very small device. I'm actually very impressed with it. Very, very cool device. I think it's well designed for what its intended purpose is. I think the materials are very good. It feels premium. It looks premium very well thought out. What a great device. So how does this device actually work? How is it able to recognize when the engine is on or off? Well, the answer to that is fairly simple. It is able to detect when the engine is on or off based on the voltage that's coming from the engine side. When the voltage coming from the engine side exceeds 13.2 volts, at that point, this little device is able to deduce that the engine is on and send power to the main battery bank. When the voltage input into this device is below 13.2 volts, at that point, it lets the solar panels send power to the main battery bank and charge up the batteries. So then how is this device connected? Is it connected directly to the engine? Is there an intermediary? The truth is that every engine will have a starter battery and that starter battery is used to start the engine. And when the engine is on, that engine will consistently charge the starter battery. At baseline, the starter battery has an output of 12 volts. But when that battery is charged, when the engine is on, that 12 volt threshold is actually higher the voltage output by the starter battery when the engine is on will typically be above 13.2 volts. And so that starter battery is actually what is connected to the engine and to this device. So in essence, you have the engine, the starter battery, the device, the main power bank, the solar panels, which are connected to this device. And then this device is connected to the main battery bank. There will be a diagram that I'll put up from the Renogy website that is going to better show um, the concept. So in essence, this device is an intermediary between these two power sources and switches seamlessly between these two power sources based on the output voltage from the engine. That is its default setting. The default setting is for it to charge using the engine and when the engine is off, it is to charge using the solar panel that priority can be switched. If you press the select button, it will make solar power the default charging method. And what that means is that even if the engine is on or off, the solar panels will be the preferred method to charge your batteries. So based on these two priorities, engine priority versus solar priority, you can fit your charging needs to your situation and tailor them to whatever works best for you. There is one little note that I'd like to point out, and that is that this device is only able to recognize the output voltage from the starter battery on the engine. And with that said is that if that battery by default outputs 13.2 volts without the engine being on, then this device will be able to recognize that the engine is off. So it's important that the battery function properly and that the voltage of 12 volts um, is the default on that battery. Because if it is over 13.2, this device will recognize it as an engine being on. At that point, it will be either a faulty battery 
or sometimes batteries that are not faulty will output a higher voltage of 13.2 volts if they have just been charging or if the engine has just been turned off for a period they might output that and then this device will perceive it as the engine being on so those are the two little things to be considerate of and to um, think about when installing this device overall as a concept it is a fairly simple concept but it is <laughs> i'm sure very difficult in execution and i'm sure that renegy put a lot of thought into creating this device and making it work practically not just from a concept standpoint so i'm very excited to install this on the sailboat today um, and show you the process today we will be installing this renegy dc to dc battery charger and mppt charge controller this device will be an upgrade from the previous device that i've had installed which was simply a mppt charge controller the previous device had a maximum input of 30 amps and this device actually has an input of 40 amps so it's an upgrade this device is also able to charge up the batteries that i have on board using both the engine power and using solar panels the previous device that i've had on board was only able to charge up my batteries using solar panels so in that regard this device is a significant upgrade because it allows me to do both so stay tuned for the installation. We'll be using the heat shrink tubing that came with the kit to connect the solar panels to the charger. We'll be crimping it using a crimper and then using a hot gun to heat shrink the tubing. So you can see now that we've connected the solar panels to the DC to DC charger, the instrument cluster came on. Very nice. You can see here the side-by-side -side comparison between the Renogy Rover 30 amp MPPT charge controller and the Renogy 40 amp DC to DC battery charger and MPPT charger. So the Rover itself is a little bit bigger compared to the newer device. It also is able to take in a maximum input of 30 amps compared to 40 amps. And of course, the Rover MPPT charge controller can only charge up batteries using solar energy, whereas this device can charge up your batteries using both your engine and your solar power. So this is a significant upgrade. A small downside to the new device is that it does not have a LED panel like the Rover does. With the Rover, I was actually able to see my battery charge status on the panel whereas with the Renogy I have the side panel but I'm not able to see the current charge level of my battery so that's a small downside but compared to the functionality of the device it definitely brings a lot more to the table compared to the Rover MPPT charge controller. Overall I have very good things to say about this device I've owned it for over a year now specifically the Renogy Rover and it has never failed me. It charged up my batteries consistently. It powered up my bilge pumps consistently just using the solar panel that I had on board. So I was very, very pleased with it. I was very pleased about having independence from shore power or engine power using it. However, moving forward, I am very grateful to have this newer device that is actually able to produce more power using both the engine and my solar panels. So this is definitely an upgrade. And I'm looking forward to seeing how this device performs. The Renogy Rover performed very well for over a year. I've never had an issue with it. 
and I'm very, very pleased with it. I'm actually going to keep it and maybe use it for future projects uh, while I have it in storage, while this one will be the main workhorse moving forward. So those are the two main comparisons. I genuinely think that these are wonderful devices and I'm looking forward to seeing how this device performs moving forward. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.